everyone, it is Misty and I am here with Jennifer Long and we are so excited to teach you how to make this Santa's Workshop panel. All right, Jennifer, so let's tell everybody what they need to make this adorable project. Excellent, for sure. You actually only need two items to begin with, so you really only need the Santa's Workshop felt panel and a little bit of extra felt for the back of your felt dolls. Awesome. However, if you want to make it um, just a little bit stronger or add a little bit of embellishments, today we're going to use also some DMC embroidery floss colors. You can pick colors that you find really match or ones that um, shine brightly with your uh, project. You can have some little buttons and I'm also going to use this product called <laughs> um, Heat and Bond Fusible Interfacing. So this is a heavyweight and I'm going to use it to stabilize my dolls. I'll just show you here. It makes them really, really stiff and strong so that they don't have end up with floppy heads or anything. Cute. Yes. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started and you can walk us through how to make these. Perfect. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is you're going to open up your felt panel. Let me just show you all the things that come in on this felt panel. Okay. All right, so if you want to help me hold it, Absolutely. this is an extra large felt panel. Oh my goodness. So you get lots of lots of value for this. There are instructions written right on the panel, and this is for the easy sew method. So that's what we're going to be learning today. But there is a link at the bottom here for downloading step-by-step uh, -step fully illustrated instructions, and those are free on my website. And um, they just give you like step-by-step -step what we're going to do, and then a couple of other options for a little bit trickier with the bag flip. This so, is so cute. So there's, there's a pack and play that happens here. So there's like a, a, a play mat here. They're gonna have pockets to store all your dolls. Here's Santa's workshop. There's a to and a from at the back. There's handles, and then there's all of these characters that you get. <laughs> so, so fun. So much fun. So let's begin. All right. Yes, okay. So the first thing we're going to do is roughly cut out each shape. So the one thing I do want to no note is that there are two seam allowances on all the shapes and that is done intentionally. Um, because I used to be an early childhood educator, mm -hmm. um, I really wanted these um, items and shapes to be used for all the ages. So there's nothing worse than doing all of this work in hand embroidery and then just having you know little dexterity or just little hands and then cutting into your shape. Mm. So if, if you're a beginner sewist or if you are working with a young sewist, please use that outer seam oh, allowance that's there. Awesome. Yes. But if you um, are a more experienced sewist or you want just a tighter um, design and shape, then you can use this inner seam allowance here. Perfect. Great. So you're just going to cut out that shape um, in like a, a rough cut so you don't have to cut on the seam allowance yet. And then you cut out your heat and bond fusible interfacing. So I just cut it out to match. I laid them all on top of it first and I cut out these shapes. And I'm going to take it over to my iron and I'm going to press. But I'm going to make sure that I press on the interfacing side and not on the felt side. It's always a good idea whenever you're pressing anything to do a test first, just to make sure that, you know, nothing changes in your design. That makes sense. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to come on over here. And I'm just going to do it, press it on the back side. And I'll just fuse it together. Good. Perfect. So it looks like this. And once it's ready to go. So I already have one that's nice and cooled already. And this is where you can have lots of fun. So now it's nice and strong if you want to feel how stiff it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's nice and stiff and it's a great shape. And this is a great way to teach young kids different um, embroidery techniques or sewing techniques. So you can teach them here or you can also hand embellish. Um, as you can see on the Santa here, I've done oh lots gosh, of cute I little... I love it. Lots of cute little French knots. And because we're giving these to younger children, texture is so important. Mm -hmm. So texture is really fun, so it's really fun to do a lot of these different little French knots. But if you are going to do anything, I just want to give a little disclaimer here. If you're going to do anything with buttons or anything else, just make sure of the age that you're mm -hmm. giving this to your children so that it's age appropriate. Absolutely. Good. So I'm just going to give you one little tip and trick. So I'm just going to follow the design. And do you see these little dots over here? Yeah. I think I'm just going to embellish them and make French knots on them. All right, let's do it. So I'm just, I already had this threaded, so I didn't have to do it on camera and made a knot in the back. 
And I, this is six strands of embroidery floss because I do want a lot of this texture. Sure. So I used all six um, strands of floss and I'm going to pull the knot all the way through at the back and just keep it a little taut and I'm going to wrap it around. I do it twice. Sometimes you can just do it once, but I like to do it twice because I really want that texture. Then I'm going to put this needle in really close again, right to where it was. And I'm going to keep a little bit of tension still on that thread. And then I'm just going to pull it through. Good. And there we go. There's the first oh, one. I love French so, knots. I know. They're so fun. They're really therapeutic. The great thing about um, this is once you have th these shapes prepped, you can take this anywhere on the go. Right. You can take it to the TV. You can take it to, you know, the sporting event when you're watching your uh, children or grandchildren. And just work on a few at a time. That's right. So it's really fun. And then you can take this. I know that there's some... Um, churches that are doing this with their uh, youth too. So this is a great project for giving to others as well at, you know, at Christmas time or any time of the year, really. So Ooh, I'll just wow. do one more and just show you what that'll look like. Oh, it's adorable. Yeah. It's All really right. cute. So once you have one done like that, then you'll just take your fleet or your, um, sorry, your plain felt and you'll do the exact same thing that we just did. So you'll cut out a rough cut shape around your finish. That felt on the back is gonna cover up your seams that you've done there or any of your stitches at the back and it's gonna give it a little bit more texture. And a nice finished look. Right, exactly. So once we have that done, I have one here. Okay. Then because I'm gonna be sewing on our cutting on my first seam allowance, I'm just gonna stitch inside with a coordinating thread color. So I just use white, I use white for the whole thing. Okay. And I just stitched on the back so it looks like this. And so I, I love that you didn't actually stitch on this since you're going to come back and trim on that one. Right. I think that's important for everyone to realize yes. because I made that mistake the first time I worked with one of your panels. So it's so nice to be standing oh, next yes. to you and learn one on one. Right. And so you kind of went in the middle there and then you can come back and trim on the line. Yes. So that is a really good point. So yeah. that if you are doing this with a younger child, you definitely can sew right on that line and then trim on that outer on the outer, on one. The outer line. But yeah. because I want to trim it nice and close, I stitched on the inside. I love it. It looks great. And now I'm so excited to use these wonderful pair of scissors that I just got introduced to today. They're pretty great, aren't they? Oh my goodness, Misty. <laughs> wow. So look how they cut. They just cut so easy. So um, I, I, I use scissors all the time for so many different projects, lots of little hand crafting projects like this. And these scissors, I don't even have to like squeeze. I know. They just kind of <laughs> cut like butter. It's pretty nice. They do. <laughs> so then I just uh, cut along that seam allowance. Um, whichever one that you're working with all the way around and I'm going to use this nice tip since I have it on these scissors yep. to cut in and continue all the way around. I just cannot get over how cute these are. This little owl. It's just darling. Uh, yeah, so I even put little French knots on his feet there, on his um, little pom -pom. elf shoes. <laughs> and so the, you know, the wonderful thing about um, about these felt dolls is that you can do them with children, but also I notice with my own children um, and the children that I give these to is that they know that they're handmade. Mm -hmm. And so they treat them with different care than they would normally with um, other toys. So it's just, and especially if they have a hand in it as well, then they know. If they see that process yes. a little bit. That makes sense. Yes. It's so sweet. So you can do that with all of the different characters. It's that easy. This one is done. It's yeah, finished and I, ready to go. I love it. And let's look at some of these just for a minute because I just think they are so cute. Let's and bring some of these in. And the beautiful thing about felt is it never frays. This is high quality Riley Blake Designs felt. And so you can just um, cut, sew and cut, honestly, and it's oh just fantastic. Goodness. So I there's just love so these. many characters. They're so cute. And what a treasure. Like I, I can remember handmade gifts like this or handmade toys like this, excuse me, at my grandma's house and we would play with them for years and years, even when we were past the age to really enjoy them just because of the nostalgia. And I just think this falls right into that category. And the really, thank you so much. And the really <laughs> exciting thing is that I have um, a 13 year old, I have four kids, but my 13 year old 
played with these kinds of things. I made them for her when she was little, but she still wants them. She saw this one and yeah. she was like, I still want this one, mom. Exactly. So, it's so sweet. Yes. The, the great thing that I've seen people do too is they don't have to just be dolls. They can be applique for bags, they can be bag tags, they can be hanging on your Christmas tree, mm -hmm. on your mantle, or however you want. So you have lots of purposes for them. So cute. All right, so should yes. we work on the workshop? Excellent. Yes, so we'll move all these characters over. Okay. Good. All right, so I cut this one out already. Um, on that first seam allowance and I did that right after I did the same thing so I stabilized it with that that same um, feasible interfacing stabilizer on the back just to give one side of this house just a little bit more strength okay so you just did one yes and I chose to do the front because I want the front of the bag to sort of hold its strength the most okay that makes sense so I did that one that one's prepared to go um, I also did it to the pockets, although you do not have to do this. So this is all optional. I did it to the pockets as well, um, if you want to. So a little line along the top here, just to hold those two pieces that they never come apart. Okay. I'll get you to do that. Absolutely. And just a regular single stitch is fine on your machine and you don't have to worry about going back and forth on the angles yet. We'll Trim use, those. I was going to fight you for, oh, those scissors. for those scissors. I know. I got there first. <laughs> Excellent. So then you'll just place this. This image mirrors exactly the image um, underneath. So you'll just place it exactly on top. I'll just get all those little threads the there. Little ones. Yep. Good. Um, right on top of that pocket's going to go. And then we're going to pin it in place. Whoop. Right here. Okay, I lost them. <laughs> there we go. Um, then we'll just pin it in place. And just a couple of pins. And then you're going to just sew at a 1 8 inch around the edge of the pocket on three sides of the pocket, leaving the opening at the top. Okay. And we've, stayed, we've done that stitch at the top here. So I, can't, I should say that if you wanted to do a different fancy stitch, you're more than welcome to, obviously. Be as creative as you want mm -hmm. to for that. But we'll just stitch. I like to do a back stitch here and then come all the way around and then do a back stitch over here Perfect. again. Perfect. I will do it. Okay, thank you for sewing, Misty. No problem. this under and I will say that felt is so easy to sew with it really is <laughs> you yeah. don't even necessarily need to pin felt it uh, kind of holds its own strength even if you choose opt not to stabilize it it still holds its own strength so filming, or sorry, filming. so sewing um, while you're filming like this is super easy, but you don't have to even um, pin it if you don't love pinning. Yeah, because it, kind it holds of, itself. Yeah, it holds yes. itself together. Yes. There we go. All right. I don't have a thread cut on this machine, so we'll have to trim these little guys again. Well, that's good. Then we can make sure they're nice and close on the front and back. Yeah. There we go. And just for fun, I am going to put Santa and Mrs. Claus oh in there. Oh my goodness, so cute. Okay, so we're going to set this one aside for now. I'll just maybe move it over here. Okay. Okay. And we're going to repeat the same thing to the back panel, um, except you can see this one is not fused. So this one is just the felt. And so like I said before at the beginning is you don't have to fuse them if you, do, if you opt not to. It'll just make it a little bit softer, but it'll still be nice nice and st stable. Okay. So I've already went ahead and did all of these pockets here. Cute. So there's lots and it's going to fold on the inside. This is the play mat and this is Santa. These are the elves having so <laughs> much fun. This is their toy workshop here. Here's the presents it. overflowing and then here's of course some just other little helpers in the workshop. Adorable. 
Good. So we'll get that set over. And then the last thing we need to prepare, this is so super easy, is the handles. And we made two different um, colors for handles, just for fun, for Christmas. Because why not? Why <laughs> not, right? So we already have one prepared here, but we're going to get this one ready. Okay. So um, we'll just trim this one up. So again, there's, if you're opting for that larger seam allowance, it's there as well. Otherwise, you can uh, trim on that coordinating seam allowance. This is my first time using this cutter too. <laughs> Lovely. And I'll flip that around. And then we're going to press this one in just in half and we're not going to turn it. Um, we're going to do it in the same raw edge way because it is felt. So I'm going to turn it over like this. Okay. And go ahead and press it flat for you. Perfect. Okay. And we have one green handle to match my sweater and one red handle to match your exactly. sweater. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Can't beat the Christmas red and green. No. I'm just going to, the iron wasn't too warm yet, so I'm just going to give it another press on this side. Good. Right. So you can go ahead and pin it here, and I do recommend that if you are working with like little hands just so they don't they have the most success so that there's just not a lot of um, shifting that happens that makes sense but you can do the minimum amount of sewing here would just be on the edges and along that seam allowance or you can go ahead and do lots of different sort of like a quilted texture on mm -hmm. it perfect okay all right So many threads. And a little tip and trick is um, you don't even necessarily need to come off each time because this is going to be in the seam allowance oh, here. Perfect. So you could just like pivot or sew along and come up and down and uh -huh. sew along. Okay. And then you don't have to, I know we love using scissors, so you don't have to keep going back and forth That's then. That's perfect. Okay. So um, yeah, you can just come along one side and then stop there and turn around and come back because we'll hide those in our seam allowance. Uh -huh, that is a good tip. I didn't even need to close up those two ends, I guess. No. Just so it's, the, it's the nice. long ones. Love it. All right. I'll add these two so that they match. We want them to match. That's right. <laughs> Right, we're almost ready for the final step. Okay, so I'm going to put the back um, of the bag face down on, the, on my cutting surface. Okay. And then I'm going to put the top of my bag face up. And you can know which way you're going the right way so your chimneys are going the oh, right perfect. way. Oh, <laughs> perfect. There we go, yes. Okay, so then your chimneys are matching like this. And so you can see it has an identical match all the way around. Cute. when we're almost ready to sew it. So all you need to do is decide which side you want the green handle and which side you want the red handle to be on. 
and you'll place it in um, the handle on the same spot. So I'm actually going to put one inside the chimney. Cute. That was just an adorable way to do it. And um, I'll pin it. So I'm just going to take note of how much I'm putting it in here. Uh, very precise, one finger. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I'm going to do the same one on this side. And on this side, it's going to, so it comes up straight. Do you see that it's going to be at a 45 degree angle? Yeah. That's really important to know so you don't have a, one coming. Kind of crooked handle. Yeah. Exactly, right? So um, then you just have it on a 45 degree angle like that. And you'll put that one inside. I'm going to do the same thing to pin to this side. And before I go all the way around at the end, I'm just going to test and make sure that they are matching and in the right spots. So again, what did I do? One finger. <laughs> <laughs> One other thing to note that I just wanted to mention um, is that I'm having this raw edge that we have on the inside of the house. Okay. So um, it just kind of leaves it just so that both raw edges are on the inside and it's just finishing. Just, just one of those details. Right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I'm gonna pin the rest of the house, but I just wanna test that these are good and they look fantastic. It looks great. Yeah. So I'm gonna go around and I'm just gonna do, pins are your friend so that we don't have a lot of shifting. So I'm gonna do a lots of pins. If you would like to help me. Absolutely. And we can just kind of go around um, in the seam allowance. I kind of like to peek on this side and just make sure I'm catching all the layers. And then when we sew it um, in that seam allowance, we'll be, the bag will be done. This is so simple and so cute. And you can see how like many hands make light work in this kind of a project. So it really is um, conducive to having, you know, a, a group together, a sew along together, family sewing time um, involving, or just special gifts as well. Right. I know. Great. Go maybe one good. more here and then we're good. Good. So then um, just trying to aim close to that seam allowance. You can even aim for the house is fine too okay. here. And just coming all the way around. All right. And um, yeah, here we go. I'll take them out. They won't go for a ride just okay. yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna follow that edge of the house.
All right, we have this all done. Yay, and that is how you make it. That oh, is done. It's so cute. So you can just take the bag and fold it in half. Of course, if you want this, um, it folds really, really nicely because of the two pockets here, but if you wanted to do an extra line. That makes sense. You absolutely could. And now we're gonna start putting their characters in there. Oh my goodness. So we'll have to put these two at the front, of course, maybe Obviously. with the sleigh. Um, and then we'll just bring all of these over and you and I can just have so much fun. I love it so much. <laughs> and let's just put all of these friends in here. Okay. Good. I'm going to take North some Pole. elves. Oh my gosh. Just a couple of the Jennifer, elves. Jennifer, these are so cute. <laughs> I love them. And the great thing about them is they're flat. Um, they have lots of character and detail on them. So this can c go with you. Right. So if you're heading off to um, church or, you know, grandma's house or any anywhere, it doesn't take up a whole lot of exactly. room. Exactly. It packs flat. Yes. And then they have a nice clean place to play on as well. So if you are in a public space, Oh, I just have to call out these little oh French gosh. knots on there. They're so cute, that little <laughs> snow globe. And there you go. So then oh. there's the two little handles and it just holds nice and closed and we're it away is, to Santa's workshop. It is so cute. Thank you so much for bringing this and sharing it with everyone. I really appreciate you being here. You're so and welcome. Again, let's just remind everybody what they need to make this project. Perfect. So they they need this uh, Santa's workshop felt panel. So cute. And they just need a little bit of backing felt for the dolls. Perfect. So we will see you next time here on At Home. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching At Home. We're so excited to be almost a million quilters strong here at Missouri Star. And so if you haven't already joined our family, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of all of our future tutorials. And we'll see you soon.